The construction industry has been in a state of decline for, for, for decades. Um, since the 1998 up into the, to the World Cup, I mean that, of course, up to 2010, retail boom, uh, the World Cup, there was a lot of growth in the industry, but really, since then, um, we haven't had sufficient investment in infrastructure. Um, a part of that was uh, uh, by choice, um, that government simply just not maintained infrastructure. It was not an issue of funding. Um, funding was available. At the moment, it is a funding crisis, um, which is just obviously making the, the, the situation worse. So if you have to look at what is necessary, and I, and I had to think about this because there's so much wrong at the moment in terms of our infrastructure spend um, and the issues that are around it. And there's, there's the big obvious things that, that we all know of. But, but I thought about how do we unlock perhaps some of the infrastructure spending um, that is really available, it's there, the funding is allocated, um, but it's not just, it's just so simply what's, what's not in being the way? spent. What's in the way? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to bring it down to, I want to talk about the local government um, um, spending. It's a big part of, of budget. A lot of money goes through local government. Um, throwing money at a problem is also not the solution. Unless you have capacity, you have the know-how, you have the planning, you have the skills, um, if you have the funding, you really can't do much without it if you don't have the capacity that's in place. And that's a big mistake, I think, that was made um, um, years ago, where money was pushed through local government without having the sufficient capacity Okay, but capacity, you can't just rebuild out the blocks. You can't rebuild, and that's why engineering skills is so important. It is as, as simple as local government is not planning sufficiently to spend the money. So that's why we have... Underspending, over the last six years, they failed to spend on average 75% of their budget. That equates to 60 billion rand that hasn't been spent. It's a whole year's allocation for the simple reason that they are lacking the proper engineering skills. It's not, it's not just a capacity issue. It's, the, it's, it's a political problem. Okay. And if there isn't the political will to do that, if, if they continue, I mean, what's holding Joburg back at the moment? I. There are lots of good people working there. But so long as you have a political architecture at the moment that is talking only about resources and power, I haven't once in, in the coalition debate heard the word service delivery. It's all about resources and power. That's why a coalition of parties put a 1% <coughs> mayor there who patently can't do the job but they can control. And now, let's be quite frank about it. That's what it is. Okay. And so, so that's what we've got to address, and that cannot happen without strong political leadership. Okay. And that's the problem. You know, cement goes into virtually all infrastructure. And currently, we're only producing about 50% at, of, at about 50% of capacity. And, you know, until that changes, and that's a lack of infrastructure spend, that's a lack of... Uh, skills in the, in the local authorities, provincial authorities. Um, the, the one standout example is Sanwell. I mean, they're at least spending quite a lot of money at the moment, uh, a couple of billion, um, but the rest of government is just not, not spending. We have imports coming in, uh, being dumped, um, which is an unfair competition. The biggest impediment is the fact that there's lack of spending on infrastructure and Cement, a lot of people may not know this, but concrete, which obviously is cement is a major component, is the second largest material used on earth after water. So it is critical for all infrastructure, for all development. And you know, we're currently producing about 12 million tons. We've got capacity for 23. And I think if, if that went up, it would address a lot of the other ills within the industry. If the industry was producing at full capacity, <coughs> the, some of these other issues would, would not be a problem. On the supply side, two things are required to make cement. It's limestone and electricity. We still have limestone left. <laughs> do we spend in South Africa? Yes, we spend. What do we spend on? We're not building things, but we're paying salaries. It's not as if we don't have the money. We have the money. But we're not spending it on building things, especially at the public level. And we know from, from your work as well that if public sector were to lead in terms of infrastructure uh, uh, um, expenditure, that, uh, that private sector will follow. 
Um, but we need to create the correct environment, a conducive environment that allows producers to, com to produce and to, and to trade across borders in a competitive way. We have reduced the, uh, pr uh, especially energy intensive producers' ability in South Africa in order to be competitive. And what, the reason we are here today is because we've decimated this industry from the supply and then from the demand side. Uh, uh, so uh, is protection a good thing, is it a bad thing? It, it can be a good thing provided some economic reforms provided it's temporary, and some provided some economic reforms are taking place while the protection is in place. But we will be here next year again if we don't see reforms. We should not be having these discussions today uh, because our environment has created uh, uh, the situation where we find ourselves in today. If we fix the demand uh, uh, bottleneck, if we fix the supply bottlenecks, um, uh, can this industry be competitive? Of course they can be competitive. You don't survive 130 years by not being competitive. You, you certainly have just found out something in terms of uh, uh, how to make cement and how to survive. Um, uh, so fix the local conditions, especially the production environments for high -end energy, pr uh, uh, energy producers, not only, but, but all, most definitely, especially baseload electricity. The legislation change that we've had last year for electricity generation on its own, in isolation, is not nearly enough in order to save the industry. Not without de <coughs> a, a reliable, predictive, robust, extended demand for building stuff over the next two decades. If we, if we do those things, Adrian, completely different ballgame, completely different country, completely different discussion. That should be the aim.